Hi, this is Pookie, welcome back. Today I am going to make a video for you about trigger mapping and troubleshooting. Um, this is a really simple idea that can help you to put practical strategies in place if you or someone that you're working with or care for is struggling with, say, self-harm or anxiety or any other kind of difficult thoughts, feelings or behaviours that you're looking to try and change. Um, it's really simple. It starts with journaling, essentially, and what you do is you journal for a period of a week, maybe a couple of weeks, um, and during that time you either keep quite detailed journal entries um, once or several times a day, or you might do something much more basic like breaking the day down into time slots and giving yourself um, a kind of point score on a scale of 0 to 10, where 0 might be completely calm and 10 is highly anxious, or 0 is calm and 10 is angry. It depends on what the issue is that you're looking to, to resolve or change. And it might, of course, be that you are looking to measure several different things. We do this over a period of a little while in a way that makes sense to us, in a way that is accessible and feels possible to keep up with. That's why for some people the scales might be the best thing because it doesn't it's not a big onerous task. After a few days or a couple of weeks, what we do is we have a look back at that and we begin to look for whether there are any patterns. So it might be that we find that, oh, okay, morning's a really tricky time or oh, things seem to be a little bit better in the early evening. I wonder what's going on there. Um, or maybe we say, oh gosh, both Wednesdays that we looked at, that afternoon was a time when things were much more difficult. I wonder why. Um, and we can begin to then see where we see patterns and think, what was happening? Where was I? Why did I feel that way? We can also look at times when things felt a little bit better, a bit more manageable, and again think, where was I? What was happening? Why did things feel a little bit better? And what we're trying to do basically is to learn when the issues might arise and think about, can I do anything to avoid that? Can I do anything to manage that better? Is there something that I can, I can change here or additional support I can put in place? Or maybe even just preparing for the fact that it might be hard then can be helpful sometimes. And um, we're also looking at what can I learn from the times when things were a little bit better? Now, if you're working with someone on this, say you're their teacher, their parent, their friend, um, and you're encouraging someone to go through this kind of journaling process, it's really better if you can support them to actually have a look for the patterns here and to troubleshoot what they might be able to do in response to these patterns. Because if you just tell them all the answers, A, they might not be the right answer for that person. You need them to kind of tell their story. You need them to uh, help to suggest what things might work for them because they will generally have a better idea. You might point them in the direction of things that you know have worked before. You might say, oh, well, you remember we used to, um, I don't know, use box breathing when you struggled with um, coming to school on a Wednesday morning in the past. You remember we did that and it was quite helpful. Do you think there's any times when that might help here or are there other things that might help? Um, but yeah, you want to help them come up with the answers. And the reason for this is because yeah, if you do it for them, it might not be right. But also, um, you when you support someone to try and find answers for themselves, then they are much more likely to kind of buy into those answers. And also, you are helping to provide them with the skill of kind of problem solving their own issues. And it kind of also means that if they face unexpected difficulties, that they then might have um, more capability to turn to different coping strategies um, and different ways of managing their feelings that they've kind of learnt and troubleshooted in the past. So it's a really, really simple idea. Exactly what the journaling looks like is completely up to you and the person that you're supporting. Um, and how long you do it for is also completely up to you. But it can be a really helpful thing to continue to do over a period because the other thing it can help you to do is to see progress. You can see if things are going forwards or indeed if things are going backwards. And that can give you a prompt to say, right, something needs to change here. Or, hey, we're getting something right here what's working well what can we learn from that how can we build on it i hope it's helpful really simple idea i'd love to hear how you're using it whether you've managed to put it in place how you think might go, you might go about it if anyone's got any templates that they find helpful that would be great to share as well um, as ever if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you've got stuff to share leave it in the comment below and if you'd like to hear from me again in the future then please hit subscribe thank you so much bye